Hello there, it's Jay here from uh, Jay's Vintage Junk and today what I thought we'd do, we'd have a quick look at this. This is a um, a Quick Shop Mark 1 um, quite a famous joystick really, I think every one of us had one of these. It's one of the ones out of my um, it's one of the ones out of my lot like I said, uh, I know I certainly had um, these as a kid on my um, computer and someone uh, that watches my videos was asking about a, um, a quick shot one joystick uh, whether I'd be interested in selling one and like I said I don't sell them um, untested and just as is so what I thought I would do is um, go through this one and um, see what's wrong with it, see what we can do about um, fixing it up and. Uh, just basically go over um, these quick shot joysticks and show you um, what you need to do to clean them to get them uh, fully working. I've got this one currently connected up to my uh, little 2600 Junior there. That's the one I was showing uh, the S video um, mod on on the um, previous video. Actually, amazingly, that S video mod is actually fitted inside the case. That's all together now and it's actually got the plug-in board um, inside it but um, I've just got that connected up just so um, I've got something to um, test this joystick with and it does work this one so if we go um, if we go right little fella goes right left it does work but it's quite stiff you have to really yank it that way I don't know if you can see the little fella at the top of the screen there moving I've not got that many um, 2600 games that actually use all um, four directions on the fire button, so uh, obviously uh, you're limited to this. Fire buttons um, work, I can jump off, I can control the little guy, like I said, all buttons work, but um, let's reset that. All buttons work, but um, left is really, really stiff. All the fire buttons work absolutely fine. Down works fine. Right works fine. Up works fine. But uh, like I said, left's a bit. Um, left's definitely a little bit more temperamental than the other um, ways. So uh, let's uh, switch that off. Let's unplug this thing and we'll get into it. And we will um, see what we can do about that. Oh, no. Let me uh, go back down onto it there. So we will. Uh, the feet are decent on it. It actually does stick to the table um, quite nicely. So the rubber suckers are all good on it. Um, well, there's nothing wrong with that front fire button, but we'll go in there first and we'll give that a quick clean up in there, and then we'll get into the um, guts of it. Do this as well, just so I show you what's inside one of these quick shot. Um, Quick shot ones. They were a really cheap budget joystick, but like I said, they were they what you had when you didn't have a huge amount of money. You could buy the. I remember there was a shop in uh, my local town that had uh, these in them, and uh, I think they were four ninety nine. They were the cheapest joystick you could buy in the local town. I mean. Tandy's you could buy, we had the local Tandy store there, Radio Shack as you have in America um, and you could buy joysticks there but they were you know £30, £25 even the Tandy's own brand one I think was like I think it was 1995 or something like that but you could go around to the car into the little um, cheap shop and you could buy one of these for um, a fiver right okay we're in let's just uh, take the plastics off. Now the plastics are in um, decent condition. I can't find anything really wrong with them. Not even that dirty really. We'll give that a little clean up with a bit of isoprop while we're in here. There is the uh, fire button. And it's the same type of button. I don't know if you can see that. It's the same type of button as um, you find used on the Atari 2600 and um, countless other joysticks. It's a little metal, metal dome pad on a contact. And all we need to do with that is we just peel the tape away nice and gentle, separate the two pieces. And in fact, that's spotless in there, it's absolutely spotless and shiny. And it's the same there, I don't even need to clean that. We'll put that 
we'll just put that back on and put it back together because like I said there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all it's uh, it's not dirty at all it's absolutely fine and that tape's still nice and sticky so it'll just stick back down there we are so the fire button there is absolutely fine all the plastics are in a nice good condition I'll just get a tiny tiny little bit of isoprop I'll give me a tiny little touch and all I'm going to use that for is just I'm just going to clean round and get that little bit of grease and dirt out from round the button the button's even clean there's nothing dirty and nasty about it but while we've got it out it just pays to get any grime or anything off it I mean, yeah there's a lot there's a little bit on there come off but it really isn't bad at all there we are that's clean that a little wipe. there we go that's uh, that's come up clean so we'll put the board back in and put the uh, put the button back in. Oops! We'll put that back on there first, like that. And the button's back in position. Put that back in position. There we are. We'll get that all that's all buttoned, buttoned up right. Let's put the screws back in. Last one. Okay, that's all back together. And we'll get into the bottom of it and we will uh, have a look. Oh, that's interesting. We've got some screws missing from here. I think I've not been in this. A screw missing there and a screw missing there. Hmm. Do why the screws missing when uh, it looks like it basically works? That's odd. I can understand if it had a uh, completely dead direction or something on its screws being missing because someone could have been using it as a parts a parts joystick for the little dome contacts and stuff. I've found that quite a lot with broken Atari um, 2600 controllers I've bought in the past, and someone's had them before and uh, pinched all the good domes out of them. Uh, there we go. That's the two screws out. Hopefully, we can find something to replace uh, replace the missing ones. Let's uh, get in here. Well, it don't look bad or anything inside. Let's uh, let's get this uh, board out. And there we are. Forgot about that. The board obviously is connected to them uh, them bits in there that we just put back together. So I think our best course of option is just to unsolder them for the uh, for the time being. We can get this separated out. Just gonna... it's these little wires here that we need to um, desolder. That one and that one. That's the first one off. That's the second one off. Should just better hook them out now. There we go, and that's the uh, that's the whole top of the joystick off. That means we can get a bit better access in here. Now let's just have a look. Now, obviously, let me just get this right. The joystick is that way around, so 
there's nothing fancy about that. No, that is the uh, left left button there. That's the right up and down. That's fire. In fact, if we switch the uh, Atari, oh, I'm going to have unplugged it. Let's uh, plug that back into the Atari. Ugh. Like that. And so the one that we're interested in is that button there, because that's the No, it seems all right on the actual board. Uh, we we'll look up at the um, little fella at the top on the boat. Uh, I don't know. It does just so. No, it's not as good pressing that way. He um, he stalls pressing that way is where he's fine. He's fine the other way. I'm not very good at um, doing this on um, just pressing the buttons. But yeah, no. You have to press a lot further on the left hand um, button than you do on the right hand button to get him to move. So, what we need to do is just get in there and uh, clean, switch the Atari back off, um, clean the contacts under there because that must be where the problem is. So let's uh, peel this up. Be careful while you do this, you don't want to... Uh, cause any damage and ideally you want to put this back it's basically just packing tape so if you do ruin it you could just replace it with um, a good strong seller tape that is the one that's causing the problem right there so let's uh, we've got that to a point where we can get it out come on off you come Hmm, still seems stuck down. I've peeled all the, uh, at least I think I've peeled all the tape off from around it. Yeah, it feels like it. So why are you now come off? Let's get the rest of this tape out of the way because we can replace that at a later date. Let's salvage the little button there. Ooh. Let's see why this won't come off. I think it's got two layers of tape. Ah, there we go, it's moving now. There we come, out you come. And you can just see, I don't know if it comes out on the camera, but right in the middle of there, it just looks a little bit corroded. It does look like a little bit, uh, a little bit dirty right in the middle there, so we'll give that a clean, like that, with a little bit of isoprop. That's well, you can just see on the edge of there, it's a little bit dirty. That has cleaned off nice. We'll do the same on the back of here, just for completeness. Let's give that a little, uh, a little clean as well. And then that can go back in position there. And we just need some tape just to stick that back in position. Just bear with me a second while I find my tape. Where's my tape gone? I know I had it before. Is it not covered? No, it's not. You, know, you get set up to do these things. You get all your tape all set up ready, and what happens? It disappears. Uh, I think you're just gonna have to bear. All right, I'm back. Oh, sorry about that, but we managed to uh, find some tape. <coughs> right. So, we have uh, cleaned the, uh, the suspect contact there, and we've got our little um, domes. The domes are all still in absolutely excellent condition. Just get this old tape off them. But if you put the dome on the table, and you press on it, you want to... You can hear that. That's how you know it's a good dome. If it doesn't make that little snap sound when you press on it, it's probably cracked and you need to find a um, dome off a scrap a scrap stick or something else that uses these little little spring contacts but them two are fine and all the ones that are um, still on the stick are fine it was just a little bit of um, dirty corrosion underneath that contact there which has 
cleaned off perfectly with a um, the isoprop and a little bit of a uh, little bit of isoprop on a, on a <coughs> oh, excuse me on a cotton bud. Let me learn to speak again. Right, so all we need to do is put them back in the joystick, and all I'm going to do is use good old fashioned sticky tape. So we just break off a little uh, little piece of sticky tape like that. Put the switch in the centre of it. And then all we need to do is position it back in position in the joystick. Like that. Now don't worry about a little bit of tape there because we can just take that off with... Uh, we'll use this... Um, this craft knife thing I've got here, there we go, just cut that little bit of tape off there because we don't need that. There we go. And that is that button back in position, cleaned up nicely underneath. We'll do the same with this fire button, we'll just stick that back where it needs to go. So once again, just need a little bit of um, sticky tape. I can rip a little bit of sticky tape off here. Yeah. Just uh, stick, stick that on there, like so, and get that and line it up where it needs to live on there. Stick it down, and we can just uh, we need to get rid of the excess tape there because it's just covering where we're going to solder that wire back in a minute so we just get the, uh, the knife a little cut in it there and tear that bit off there like that because we need them two contacts obviously to put the uh, other fire button back on and I'll just fold that round rather than rip it off but that button's back in position They all feel okay now. All we need to do now is reattach this. So we've got the two wires coming from the uh, from the fire button down down in the uh, base there. And we've already checked that, and it's absolutely fine. So what we need to do, we need to feed them through there like that. You can see this on there camera, feed them back through that little hole in the PCB, of course we could have dis disconnected these at the other side up in the um, handle there but uh, it doesn't make a lot of difference, you just need to desolder them to make um, working on this a little bit easier, so you could possibly do it without desoldering them but it would be a lot fiddlier and uh, just taking them off and then soldering them back when you've uh, when you've finished that's that one back in position and then we just need to solder this one uh, back where it goes as well which is right there just like that That's the um, fire button connected back up. We can now reassemble the uh, joystick. Oops, let's put the uh, the bottom fire button back in. Then line everything back up. I think that's looking good there. Something not quite... Ah, that's it. There we are. There was a... Uh, Post that just went through there, and our um, our sellotape was stopping it going in, but that's just pushed through now. So that's back in position. All we need to do now is uh, put the base back on. Get all this to line up. Helps you put the base back on the right way around. There we go. That's the. Uh, and get it lined up right as well, obviously. So 
and flatten that off, push that out, and just give that a little turn, put it back in. There we are. That actually feels better already. Can you hear that? And that was the faulty uh, that was the faulty one. So I wonder if it just slightly shifted out of position as well as um, as well as having that bit of dirt underneath it because that actually sounds sounds better. Let's uh, screw this back together. Oops, one screw in. This is the second screw going in, and we've got two screws missing. So I think, hopefully, screw that in like that. I uh, will have something suitable over here. A couple of them. They're slightly shorter, but uh, I think they should still um, they should still suffice. Yeah, they look. Right, they'll do nicely. I always, whenever I scrap anything, I always um, save all the screws because you never know when you need them. Yep, yeah, they fit nicely. They're probably a couple of mils shorter than the originals, but that won't really, really matter. Yeah, that that switch that wasn't actually clicking before is clicking now. Let's switch the old um, Atari on, and we will try it on the Atari and see whether it's made any difference. Right, that's uh, Skin Diver up on the Atari, and let's see whether our man moves. That's perfect now. It needs exactly the same amount of force to move left as it did to move right, so that's fixed. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Oops, he got eaten. Try that again. Yeah, I'm really am terrible at this game, but uh, he is definitely now working much, much better. He, like I said, he now runs. He now runs left with a touch of the joystick rather than. Uh, as he was before. Down's fine, right's fine, up's fine, but now he actually swims left without you having to yank the joystick all the way to the left. So yeah, I am, I am definitely happy with that. That's as easy as these are to um, sort out. These are really nice, cheap, easy, basic joysticks. So, um, like I said, if you want a bit of budget fun joystick, they are um, they are worth getting, and they are easy enough, as you can see, to um, sort out if they do have a uh, problem with them. So, I'm going to leave that there um, for now. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.